Hey, what's happening guys? Welcome back to this episode of Holly's Garage. Um, today, we're going to be working on a, another piece of machinery, a uh, piece of equipment. It's a uh, Bobcat 873. Um, I picked it up at an auction not too long ago, and I've been wanting a Bobcat for a while. And I mean, I figure I could use this, make a couple bucks here and there, and then uh, it would be nice to move around some of this stuff because that tractor is, it's nice but it doesn't have the lifting capacity I need for some of these things. Like this thing can lift 2,300 pounds or so, 2,400 pounds or something. Um, but she's, she's stout. It's a, bit, it's a big machine. Um, I got it. It's got 4,300 hours or so on it. Uh, it was filthy dirty. Um, I've, I'm going to put another video up of me cleaning this thing out. And, you know, just a run down of the machine overall. Um, but yeah, it was filthy dirty. Got it running good. Um, the thing started right up from the auction. Rode it up on my uh, trailer and uh, brought it home. But uh, I got a little bit to do to it. I bought all new filters for it. I got a new timing belt for the, the motor because these timing belts, it's a Dutes, uh, Dutes engine. These things, every 2,000 hours or so, I think you're supposed to change the timing belt on them, or maybe 3,000. So. I'm sure this one's about due, and uh, just for peace of mind, I'll spend the $200 on, or it's not even, I think it was 120 bucks for the kit, and uh, I'll spend myself a couple hours working on it. Um, I'll give you another rundown of this thing in a second, and uh, then we'll start slapping some of these filters on here. Alright, so here she is, big old 873. Um, power washed it and blew off all the old grease and stuff. Uh, I've tried to get new grease in the fittings. It looks like it's not pushing through here so I'm going to have to pull the pin or do something to get it get it working. Um, as you can see here, there's a load of grease in there. So those bushings are probably shot too. Um, but overall this thing's in decent shape. I washed out the whole the whole underside here, um, this is all just caked full of mud and dirt, grease and everything else. It's got good tires on it. Um, they came with a big, a big old bucket, and she's got some rust to her, but nothing structurally. It's all heavy. I mean, there's not really even heavy flaking or anything. It looks like the paint is the only thing flaking off. So I might have this thing blasted, and then maybe eventually just paint it quick just so it's it'll last a little longer it's got foot controls and hand controls which is pretty cool um, I never operate anything with foot controls so it took a second to get used to uh, then you have your auxiliary uh, ports for you know the attachments you can use a grapple I think you use bush hog and all that kind of stuff and uh, that's about it I noticed that the hydraulic fluid was low on this thing. Uh, there's a little, there's an eye there. There's a little glass in here that you look at, um, which is fine because we're going to drain all this fluid out, and put all new fluid in. And this is the motor. It's, it, I mean, it's pretty clean from what I can tell. Uh, I mean, I did power wash everything, and there's some grease or oil here, some build up. And it, there was some around this this cylinder here, so I don't know. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it as I'm running it, to make sure the head gas is not going on it or anything. And uh, that's really it. Timing belt all in here, underneath this cover. Um, should be pretty simple to to do. And then the filters. You got your your fuel filter. You got your oil filter. You got your air filters. Uh, you got two of them in here, just like, you know, the commercial zero turns and every other piece of heavy equipment. Um, muffler. You got the radiator here. Everything's real easily accessible for the most part. Um, like even the... Covered in grease. Um, even the hydro filters are easy to get to. They're, you just you pop the cab up and they're right there. 
And the door on this thing is in good shape. Usually these things are just, you know, get the crap beat out of them. But there's a little scuffs and stuff. There's no real dents on it, though. Um, and I just wrote down all the capacities and stuff so, so I know for, for next time. Um, and this is me changing them, changing the fluids and all that kind of stuff. So let's get to it. We'll open up the box of box of goodies I got here. Just like that. So what we got here? We got our fuel filter. Oil filter. Filters. I sure hope these are the correct hydro filters and our hydraulic filters. Now the filters that are on there are. Let's see what we got. It says that you open it up. Well, I might need two hands because this thing's a little got a little bit of weight to it, and that gas shock isn't like new or anything, so <laughs> that'll probably be helpful. Let me get, I'll set this up on the stand and uh, we'll lift it up. I might as well show you where the bolts are. So you can see there's one there, one there on either side. This doesn't even have the nuts on them. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll buy some nuts to put it on there and I'll show you how you lift it up basically. Super simple. You just grab on either side of the that right now also so there's your two filters two hydro filters easily accessible um, there's your controls for your uh, your hydros to go forward and backwards that is I believe your hydraulic pump and uh, that's it really. It's all pretty simple. Um, that's another reason why this is an old machine. It's my first Bobcat uh, or skid steer or anything else. So um, I think it's a good starter because there's no electronics really. I mean you, you obviously have some but it's nothing like those new machines now. And uh, for the most part I think I could do all the work myself. And uh, they're pretty bulletproof, so and stout. I mean, this thing, this thing could probably lift up that that whole uh, short bed out there by itself with a good set of forks. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get those filters changed out now and we'll move move along. Uh, this is where your oil drain plug is. Let's see, you can see it. Makes it real easy. Oh. Just stick it there and see if you can bust it loose. Dang. She's stuck. <laughs> you get another wrench too. Alright, just stick another wrench on this side.
going to launch off there. It didn't. Alright. So we'll let that drain. I'll grab the filter while that drains. Not super black. I mean, it's a little black, but a little dirty. I'd rather just change it so I know what's going on with it. It's gonna take uh, all day at this rate. <laughs> it's just trickling out. I don't know if there's a different way to do this. Um, I don't see any other kind of drain plugs. You got that big, big drain plug right there. I'm not bothering to open that. Oh, just let it sit. While I wait for the, uh, the oil on the drain all day. Uh, I'm just going to replace the fuel filter while I'm at it. I tried to get all Wix filters, but the place I ordered it from, I ordered it from, uh, the kit is off of crossfilters.com, and, um, they have some really reasonable prices. All these filters from... Uh, oh, that's, that's from oil. Don't need that yet. Um, so all these filters were $150, I think. A little bit under. Um, same filters from Bobcat would have been... A little more than double that. So, so you save a couple bucks order with that. And they're out of Florida. They have good customer service. I ordered my uh, excavator filters from them and. Um, they actually sent 
they were the wrong filters for it. I guess they had a different, uh, different model, a newer model excavator than what I was running. You can pre-fill these too, um, you don't have to because this actually has a, it's got a pump so you just crack this bleeder and you can manually just pump it up on this, on this motor. Um, yep, so I'm going to look around and see what I can find out for the uh, hydraulic filters. Let's see what we need to do for that. I mean, I know where to hydraulic filters are, but I gotta figure out where the something have it for the drain. Um, I was gonna change the crankcase fluids too while I'm at it. But your crankcase or not crank I guess it it is the hydrogenic uh, the hydrostatic case is right here. Which you can see I removed it when I was power washing and uh, it has a gasket on it. I'm just going to use gasket maker after I get it out this time. Um, I don't know how to drain the hydraulic system on this so I'm going to look that up. I wouldn't imagine you have to pull the pan but or the whole belly pan on this. I don't even think you can. But I'll have to check it out. Looks like drive motors have, um, I don't know if you can, it's hard to see. See that silver? That's a, a drain plug for that. Let me do some research, find that out. Right, so supposedly it's in this cover right here, which is just, it's three, I use a half inch drive. You only need to do the two and you can probably just I didn't have to loosen that one, but you can get away with just loosening it and then letting it fold over. Um, supposedly it's in here somewhere. And I bet you there's like three inches or four inches of junk on the bottom. It's probably down in there. So I'm going to have to scrape all that out and vacuum it. Because this here, that's your reservoir, your hydraulic tank. Um, and it's supposed to be below that. So. Let's see what I can find. I think I drained enough of it here. So all of it's not gonna come out of there right away. Alrighty. Now I got everything covered in oil. Seems like some some piece of equipment and some uh, you know cars, trucks, you know, they um, some just you can't do anything to help making a mess in it. And uh, I don't know, some you can't. Some are just so easy and clean, it's not a problem. But this one, not the cleanest, but not the dirtiest either. Comment below if you guys, uh, you know, whatever you think the, the messiest oil change or fluid change you had to deal with. I know all the hydraulic fluid changes are usually a big mess, but, um, alright, cool. Well, this won't be too bad now. We're done. We have to fill her back up. Alright, we'll fill her up. I just 
throw some 1540. I usually go shell with the Rutella or the Mova Del Back, um, or sometimes even Walmart oil. But this stuff was like a penny more than Walmart oil, so I just got this. The shell was another dollar fifty a gallon or something, but it's just this works just the same. So save a couple dollars. And this thing holds uh, nine and a half quarts. So about two, two and a quarter of these uh, containers, give or take. You just gotta check your fill, you know, check your uh, dipstick after you're done filling it. So we'll let the hydraulic fluid drain now. Um, mine happened to be a three quarter inch plug on it. Knock this dirt off somewhere else instead. Of the oh, it's actually, a, it looks like it's just a cap. So we'll let that drain. I'm going to undo the cap up top, and it should, it should drain a little faster when you crack the cap, but it doesn't seem like it is. <laughs> so this looks like another slow drain. Um, I forget what the capacity is on this. It is... Says it should be somewhere around 13 gallons. So, if that's true, it's going to take a long time. That's for sure. All right, well, I'm just going to let it drain, and I'll uh, keep you updated when it's done. I got all the uh, fluids drained. Um, there really wasn't much in there. I got a five-gallon bucket full so this thing was super low on fluid um, and then I'm having a heck of a time getting these filters off so I broke a couple filter wrenches already and uh, I just beat the living crap out of this thing and uh, then I was able to get this bar in here and now I got it broke free so now I just have to figure out I'll just get the bar out This is going to be another another hassle. But once I get the bar out, I'll be good to go. I need like a uh, puller or something. on this for a while. Grip on here and I'll just wiggle it. As I pull maybe. There we go. I should have put some shit on her there to catch a lot.
have to clean that out again. But I'm going to have to beat the hell out of the other one too and to get it off. Got them in there, um, and now they're all marked up. I just put the hours that I changed it on them. Then we're filling this up. Uh, and this, supposedly, this takes, I wrote it down yesterday, uh, about 13 gallons. So, well, that's for the system, and it's 21 quarts for the reservoir. So, I mean, I didn't get all the food out of this system because it's in the lines and all, too. But I just have this pump set up. And then I just, because it, this, the uh, line won't stay in there, I just zip tie to a, to a bar and just shove it in there. And it's pumping pretty good, I think. I got it a while ago. It's hard for you to see. put these on um, to fill them up you should fill them up because you don't want your hydraulic system run dry even for a little bit even a se couple seconds it could ruin it so um, I just fill the filters up and uh, that way you know at least there's no there's a, probably a few air pockets in there but it shouldn't affect anything well hey guys thanks for checking out this episode of Holly's Garage um, we got the majority of the maintenance done on this machine I have to do the timing belt still and then there's a few little odds and ends um, that I have to do, like got to get some bulbs for these. Uh, I'm going to put some LED bulbs in the lights and uh, just probably some other stuff will pop up as I use it. So um, tune in for the next episode. I'll put the timing belt on it and then uh, that should be it for this and I'll just start putting it to work. Um, it's not, these aren't terribly hard to maintain or anything. You saw like all the filters, simple to get to and all. And uh, you just run them and, and fix stuff as you go. I got a few bushings coming too, so I'm gonna 
try to get the steering. It's a little jerky and all over the place, but we'll get bushings in that replaced and see if it fixes the problem. If not, I'll get some dampeners for it and uh, just work our way down until we get it, get it solved. But uh, thanks for checking out this episode. And if you like what you saw, give me one of those thumbs ups. If you want to see more, hit subscribe and then there's a bell button too. And uh, just hit that bell button and I'll let you know when I get other videos out here. And um, yeah, thanks for checking it out. Take it easy.